Hello and welcome. Thank you for joining us here today at the Sunshine Cathedral via the website. And we want to welcome you to our worship services whenever you're in the Fort Lauderdale area. If you are in the area, we invite you to worship with us on Sunday mornings at 9 and 10.30 a.m. We're located at 1480 Southwest 9th Avenue. And for those who watch us weekly on the internet, we invite you to check our website often for other listings and programming that we might have that may be of interest to you. And for now, I invite you to come in and worship with us here at the Sunshine Cathedral. Let us pray. Surrounded by the all-pervading presence of the Holy, let our prayer be. Keep fresh before us the moments of our high resolve, that in good times or in tempest, we may not forget that to which our lives are committed. Keep fresh before us the moments of our high resolve. Amen. Our first reading this morning is from the book of Haggai. The word of the Lord came by the prophet Haggai, saying, Speak now and say, Take courage, all you people of the land, for I am with you says the Lord of hosts, according to the promise that I made you when you came out of Egypt. My spirit abides among you. Do not fear. In these human words, God's voice is heard. ...of Winston Churchill. I am prepared to meet my maker. Whether my maker is prepared for the great ordeal of meeting me is another matter. In these human words, God's voice is heard. Our third reading is from the Gospel according to Luke. Some Sadducees, those who say there is no resurrection, came to Jesus to challenge him about belief in life beyond death. Jesus said to them, the fact that the dead are raised, Moses himself showed in the story about the bush, where he speaks of the Lord as the God of Abraham, and Sarah and Hagar, the God of Isaac and Rebekah, and the God of Jacob and Leah and Rachel. Now God isn't worshiped by the dead, but by the living. To God, all are alive. In these human words, God's voice is heard. <laughs>
Would you please pray with me? May God's word be spoken. May only God's word be heard. Amen. Amen. Well, this is our All Souls Sunday celebration, and uh, some, uh, uh, it, it, it's that difficult time where we talk about the good news of, uh, of life that doesn't end. And yet, the, that comes following the bad news that uh, we miss the people that we shared our, our earthly lives with. And so, we are, we are comforted to know that the significance of our lives are not limited to our earthly years. And yet, I miss my grandma. I miss both of my grandmothers. Uh, I am glad for the healing and reconciliation that uh, my dad had, my dad and I had at the end of his life, and uh, wish that that could have continued. And so it's that, it's that bittersweet moment where we, we miss our loved ones and rejoice that they continue to live in our hearts and in the heart of God. That being said, I must be very clear, I must uh, c come out, I must be very honest to say that for me, religion is not fire insurance. I am not religious, nor do I encourage anyone else to be religious to escape some sort of afterlife torment. I am not trying to sell some sort of benefit package for the afterlife cruise. I am not trying to get people to, to get on the first class uh, part of the afterlife plane. I am not trying to uh, tell you what the criteria is to become members of the Cosmic Country Club. That sort of religion comes from a different time, it comes from a different mindset, and I believe it in this day and age does more harm than good. And so even while I celebrate the goodness of life, and even as I believe that life is so much more than the physical experience of it on this plane, I am also clear that religion isn't meant to be the thing that gets you to the next thing. Religion for me, and I mean this completely, is meant to make this experience of life wonderful. It is meant to bring us together. It is meant to help us love ourselves and then love one another as we love ourselves. Religion is to build the kind of community that Jesus referred to as the kingdom of God. It is to make this life a paradise, not to get us into a later paradise. Religion for me is not fire insurance. And I think that we just do damage to religion when we say, ours is right and yours is wrong. And how do you know yours is right? Well, mine is right because mine is getting me to that special place up a yonder. Those things come from, from a whole different world of view. And we've learned so much from science. We've learned so much from psychology. We have learned so much about religion and spirituality. We've learned so much about human nature. We have learned so much since the days that religion was sold as the thing that gets you the next better thing. And I want to redeem, not you, because you are redeemed. Rede redemption, when we, I used to redeem as a child because I was a poor kid in the South, I would redeem soda bottles. And what did that mean? I would bring the soda bottle and the guy at the feed store, yes, the feed store, y'all, uh, the guy at the feed store would give me what that bottle was worth. The guy at the feed store would tell me that bottle was worth something and would affirm its value with a coin. And so you are redeemed. Your sacred value is already affirmed. My presentation of religion is not to redeem you. It is to redeem religion so that it can be as good as it can be, so that it can bring us together, so that our world can be as good as it can be. Now, it is, however, also all Sunday. We're supposed to think about the dearly departed. So what happens in the next life? Well, let me tell you the 100% honest truth about what happens when we die. I have no idea. <laughs> and I spend no time trying to figure it out. And no time trying to persuade anyone else something that I cannot possibly know. I trust. I trust that my loved ones who are no longer with me in this physical realm are still with me. They are still in my heart. They are still in my memories. They still influence me. 
They are, they, they are still part of me and my world. Their good deeds live on after them. I trust that. I trust they live on in the heart of God. I trust that there is something more than this physical experience. But when, if you have to press me into naming what that is, I'm just not qualified. I just can't do it, and I refuse to lie. But this is what I believe. I believe that God is good. <laughs> the deacon says all the time. And that's true. And this is my commitment. I believe that God is good. When? All the time. Look what you started. The... Uh, <laughs> I believe that God is good and my commitment is to trust the goodness of God as best I can. And that's it. That's my whole theology of the afterlife. And you know what else? That's my whole theology for this life. To just believe that God is good and to trust that goodness as best I can. God is omnipresent, we say. There's not a spot where God is not. And I would have no use for any other sort of God. Any God that could be localized would be an idol. Any God that is there but not there is an idol. Any God that looks like this but not like something else is an idol. Any God that can be contained or limited or localized is an idol. And I don't have time for the uselessness of idols. So the only God that can be God for me is an omnipresence. A God that is everywhere fully present. There's not a spot where God is not. But two things cannot occupy the same space at the same time. So if God is everywhere fully present, God is the presence. God is all the presence there is. And so if you are and I am, we must be part of that which is. And that part, and that God that is, that God that is everlasting, that God that fills all space and is in all time and beyond time, that must be eternal without beginning or end. And for that to be true, if I am at all, I am part of something that is not only good, but it is eternal. What that looks like, I can't tell you. I don't know what lunch is going to look like in an hour, but I trust it's going to be good. And I trust it will come with a cocktail. Now, because I know where I'm planning on having lunch. So, um, but if God is eternal and God is good, I must be part of that eternal goodness. What will that look like after this experience of life? I can't know, but I trust that it will be good because God is good. Jesus said in John's gospel, in God's house, there are many rooms. I can't possibly know what all the rooms could look like. I can't know who's going to which room, but I know that if they're in God's house, they are all fabulous. You can't go wrong. My faith is that God is omnipresent, so neither in this experience of life or in any other could I ever be separated from the divine presence. I didn't know what this life was going to be like until I got here. And I still don't know what it's going to be like. It's constantly changing. I don't look the way in my mirror that I always think I should look in the mirror. That thing in the mirror is a lot older than I am. How did that happen? And those numbers on the scale are way higher than what I weigh. So I don't, I don't ever know. We don't know. It's all a revelation. It's all a discovery. It's all an evolution. But it's all part of a wonderful, love-filled, joy-filled journey. And so, I don't know what the next life will be like, but I trust it will be in the presence of God. And that means it will be good. The prophet Haggai, I think he was on to something when he said, God's spirit is among you, so do not fear. If God's spirit is among you, and it has to be, it's the energy of life. There's not a spot where God is not. God is omnipresence, which means God is the presence, the power, the life living itself through us. And so if God is among us, and God is, then there is nothing to fear. That doesn't mean there won't be challenges and disappointments, but it means that ultimately those things aren't what we are, they aren't who we are, and nothing, not even the biggest disappointments, can separate us from the love that God is. 
I'm an admirer of the 17th century theologian Emanuel Swedenborg. And Swedenborg wrote, human beings are so created that as to their internals, they cannot die. In other words, what is internal is eternal. Now what is internal? What's on the inside? Quaker founder George Fox said this, that there is that of God in all people, in every person has to be that way if God is omnipresent. We have to be expressions, experiences, manifestations of the divine. Isn't that what our incarnational theology is? That we look at Jesus and we say, in this human life, we see the power and the presence of God. But is that an exception or is that the example of what is true for all of life? that maybe Jesus is the model of what it looks like when we accept that reality and dare to live into it. Maybe our, our part of religion isn't to become, as the Reverend Elder Don Eastman used to say, so heavenly minded we're no earthly good. Maybe religion is meant to help us live so fully into our humanity that we express divinity as Jesus did. George Fox said there is that of God in every person. A 17th century Carmelite monk, Brother Lawrence, wrote about the practice of the presence of God. The presence of God is. And so what we are doing is learning to recognize and practice our awareness of it. And Brother Lawrence said, think often on God. Day by day, night by night, in your business and even in your diversions. God is always near you and with you. Paramahansa Yogananda brought Kriya Yoga to the West, and he said, I am the ocean of consciousness. Sometimes I become the little wave of the body, but I'm never just the wave without the ocean of God. There is no wave without the ocean. And so I may seem like the little wave, but that little wave is part of the great ocean. But then there's another way to look at that. In a country, uh, the country now known as Afghanistan, there was a Sufi poet, Rumi. And Rumi said, you are not a drop in the ocean. You are the entire ocean in a drop. That is another way of understanding omnipresence. You are the ocean in a drop. Now these enlightened, intuitive, deeply thoughtful souls thought these things. But that isn't proof. I can quote 40 more. But that's not proof. We don't have proof. We have beliefs which are well-rehearsed opinions. And sadly, some of us have rehearsed negative opinions. God loves these people, but not these people. God loves you as long as you do this, that, and the other thing. As long as you don't do this, that, and the other thing. As long as you hate those people. As long as you fit into some construct, then God will be on your side. And that's the opinion that has been rehearsed so many times. It has become a belief. And those beliefs are tearing our world apart. And so I am choosing, it is a matter of choice for me to rehearse opinions that can then become beliefs that are positive, that are encouraging, that are optimistic, that give peace. I am choosing to trust. I'm choosing the opinion and rehearsing it until it becomes a firm belief that God is good, that there's not a spot where God is not, and therefore I cannot be apart from God in this or any other reality. I choose to say with the prophet Haggai, God's spirit is among us, so there is nothing for us to fear. The omnipresence of God upon which I so totally depend. I learned at a preaching conference recently that we all have, uh, we preachers, we have between uh, four and nine sermons. We preach them for 40 years, but we have between four and nine sermons. And you know what? I think I've got one. Omnipresence. God is the one power. God is the one presence. We're part of it. If God's good, so are we. Let's go have some lunch. That's my sermon. That, I say it in lots of different ways. You are persons of sacred values. You are God's miracle and not God's mistake. But however we say it, it comes down to this. God is love. God is everlasting, eternal, omnipresent love. And such a love will not and cannot let you go. The omnipresence of God, which I so totally depend on, gives me the authority to say that you have sacred value, and that value will never be tarnished. God is the ground of being, and to be at all 
is to be part of God, and to be part of God is to forever have access to the goodness that God is. I don't know what's next. I don't need to know. Faith is trust, and I trust because I can't know. But what I believe with the entirety of my being is that we are forever in God's presence, and in God's presence there is always the possibility of peace and joy. When I am in this body, peace and joy is available to me, and when this body reaches its shelf life, when it reaches its expiration date, and I put it aside, I trust that there is still more peace and joy. And it's not limited to the community I come from. It's not limited to my gender expression. It's not limited to my sexual orientation. It's not limited to the religion that I chose, if I chose any at all. That that love and that hope and that peace and that joy is what God is. And since God is and I am forever part of that, I always eternally have the chance to experience it more and more deeply. Jesus said in today's gospel, to God, all are alive. The Pharisees thought certain kinds of people, the good people, would be resurrected at the day of judgment. The Sadducees didn't believe in that at all. And, and the Sadducees are trying to trap Jesus. What do you believe? And Jesus said, I believe God is God. I believe that God loves all of God's children. I believe that all are alive to God. I believe that all of these constructs that we have created are just that, our creation, and they don't limit God one bit. Now, we don't have to be afraid now of what's next. Why be afraid of what we can't even know? Why be afraid of what we don't even know? But we can trust if we are the people of God. If God is good and God is omnipresent, we can trust that God's goodness is everlasting and we will enjoy it forever. So free from fear that we could ever be rejected by God, that frees us not only the fear of what's next, it frees us from the fear of today. Whatever is happening, I am not facing it without God, so I can face it. And I can get through it. And I can overcome it. And so, God is love, and perfect love cast out all fear. There is nothing to fear if God is omnipresent and everlasting love. Jesus said that all are alive to God, and all means all. Let that help us experience the holy more deeply here and now. Let us live in the power of hope here and now. Let us trust that God is compassionately predisposed toward all people in this life and whatever might come next. And as a community committed to worshiping a God of pure, endless, and all-inclusive love, let us be conduits of that love so that the healing power of that love can make a difference in whatever world we happen to occupy, which is presently the 21st century planet Earth. Religion has been used to scare, control, manipulate, divide, oppress, conquer, silence, even kill people. God forgive us for so misrepresenting the truth of all-inclusive unconditional divine love. But what I can say is that there is a different kind of church that will be very intentional about never making that mistake, about never using religion to demean or diminish or humiliate anyone, to never use the power of the pulpit to tell anyone that they are somehow beyond the reach of God's love, to never use any symbol, the Bible, the cross, the Eucharist, anything to say you are somehow less than God would intend. No, this different kind of church is saying what Jesus said, to God all are alive. That God's spirit is with us so there is no reason to fear. And fear has so warped and divided and damaged this world. Sometimes that fear presented in the form of religion. And so now we are fighting in the political world and we are fighting in the military world and we are fighting in the business world and we are fighting in the religious moral world and there's all of this fighting based in fear. And what we need is not to reject religion but to redeem religion and to offer a different kind of faith that tells all people that they matter, that all people have sacred value, that all people are the children of God so that we can start living like it, so that we can usher in the kingdom of God, the blessed community here on earth. Because whatever happens on Tuesday, Day, the day after, we will still need healing from the brutality that led up to it. I want everyone to vote. I want everyone to vote, but beyond Tuesday. 
beyond Tuesday. We've got healing work to do. We have got to be the conduits of divine love that heal the world. Please vote and vote your conscience and, and, and vote the issues that matter most to you and give it consideration and pray about it, but it's not over on Tuesday. On Tuesday, it's just the next wave of work, of healing, of healing so that we can have civil discourse from now on, so that the politics of this nation is never about who should be left out or kicked out, so that the politics of this nation can be how can we lift up everybody, and we'll disagree, the Greens and the Libertarians and the Republicans and the Democrats, we will disagree about how to do it, but let us agree that it must be done, and ours can be the voice that keeps that in focus, that our job here as humans is to be the human family. Our job is to be working together to make, not to get us to paradise later, but to make this world more of a paradise here and now for all people. Let that be our prayer and our commitment. That is the religion of Paramahansa Yogananda who taught God is eternal bliss. God's being is love, wisdom, and joy. If we speak, if we dare to speak any of the names of God, let it be in the power of love, wisdom, and joy. That is the religion of the prophet Nahum who said, the Lord is good. That is the religion of the Christian mystic from the Middle Ages, Julian of Norwich, who said, as the body is clothed in cloth, so are we, body and soul, clothed in the goodness of God. And that is the belief system that would allow her to affirm, in this life and well beyond, in this experience of life and in any, all shall be well, all shall be well, and all manner of things shall be well. I believe in the eternal loving presence of God for you and for me and for every, every soul that has ever lived and ever will live. I believe that in that presence all shall be well. Religion is meant to be healing. Religion is meant to bring hope and joy. Religion is meant to remind us that we are God's miracle and not God's mistake. Every one of us, even the people we can't stand, God loves dearly. That's the good news. Religion done right inspires us to embrace the best of our faith and share it in a way that will heal broken hearts and heal aching spirits and heal fearful souls. All Souls Sunday is a day to remember that all souls all people are the children of God, and God never abandons her children in this life or any other. This is the good news. Amen.
Thank you for joining us today here at the Sunshine Cathedral. If you're ever in the Fort Lauderdale area, we invite you to stop by and worship with us on Sunday mornings at 9 and 10.30 a.m. If you'd like to make a donation to the Sunshine Cathedral, or if you'd like to find out other resources that the cathedral has to offer, please visit us at www.sunshinecathedral.org. Until the next time, we look forward to seeing you here at the Sunshine Cathedral.